Hey folks, Dan the Wolfman here. We're at the enclosed range today, and today we're doing something cool. My most expensive, coolest, nicest firearms, this lightweight Commander 45 ACP. Uh, just because I don't get a chance to shoot them near enough, and they're my most expensive firearms. And the Ruger GP100 Talo Edition, 3 and 7 shot, 357 Magnum. I have unboxings on this, and Dirty Harry Callahan, a funny one that deserves more views. You should watch doing an unboxing of this. This is a 3 inch 7 shot, 357 Magnum, a viable CCW option, 357. Uh, let's talk about it. People that carry it in stopping power, 45. Let's talk about it, and the people that carry it in stopping power. And so now I'm I do some drills, at least three or to five drills, uh, comparing them and kind of look at the times and that kind of thing. So here we go. All right, guys. So just to begin, I'm going to do five shots with the uh, lightweight 1911 Commander 45 on the middle target. Just going to draw from seven yards because, you know, FBI, if you want to believe those guys. Uh, anyway, the last of three, five, but then I'll be moving and stuff. So we're just going to keep it fair and do five shots uh, from the draw. Okay. <laughs> Haven't shot either of these in a while. Looks like I got good five upper thoracic hits there. One, two, three, four, and five. And now we'll do five of the 357. It's 125 XTPs. They're probably not that hot. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. I haven't shot 357 in about a year and a half. So there's a little hesitation on my part. Those were definitely warmer than I thought they were going to be. All right, let's see how I did. It's definitely not my best, definitely not my best. One, two, three, one A zone, two B zone, good upper thoracic, lungs with the 45. One down there, still good, hitting that heart. And one pretty bad shot, but still hitting the lung, but that's a C zone there. With the 357, one, two, three. Guys, we're going to do the same thing again because I think this might be one that's helpful for you to kind of think about things. Again, seven yards, five shots. Uh, I really did bad the first time because I haven't shot either of these in a while. 1911, I had switched to trying to ride the safety. I got to remember that muscle memory. Revolver is a different grip. I've shot some 22 revolver, but I haven't shot 357 in a year and a half. Seven yards, and uh, I was a little off camera with the muzzle, so you can see muzzle rise. Let's go with the 357 first. Whoa, that is shit. Gee. I probably shouldn't have done this again. <laughs> wow. So I definitely got to train with this and this carry method if that's what I was going to be carrying, which I don't. Uh, I'll accept it back and forth to the range when I'm doing a revolver uh, training day. I got 2B zone, uh, C zone, a bad one here, and a friggin' miss. Let's go with the 1911. Everything was right. So the initial grip and then the recoil, I saw the fiber optic green front kind of rising, both the fiber optic fronts, and uh, yeah, I kept going with it. One of those trigger pulls probably shouldn't have happened. Okay. I was feeling the serrations, but it didn't jam. I actually felt the serrations in my thumb riding the safety, so I was pushing too far in on a grip like I might... Uh, instinctively. Now it didn't jam, so that's great. And uh, looks like I got, I think, four A zone and one B zone with the 1911. So, guys, I'm trying to go as fast and realistically as I can. 357, one, two, three, and I guess I loosened up my grip in the recoil or something. It started going right and higher. Holy shit, that's not acceptable, and that's definitely not acceptable. Now, it's a 1911. I got two touching. That's very close. I got four A zone and one B zone like artery. So, I mean, 45 definitely won it this time around. Uh, now, I'm not Gun Sam. I'm not Lion Quest Fitness. Make sure you subscribe to those guys. Uh, HR Funks, you know, those guys are more revolver guys uh, than I am. But something for you to maybe consider a little bit. 
All right, guys, let's try it right-handed like I'm holding something on my offside arm. Let's do a one-handed draw, one-handed shooting. Uh, let's do two on each guy, which would leave me a remainder of three or five, depending on magazine capacity with the 1911, and a remainder one because my six shot's a seven-shooter. Three yards, one-handed stuff. Ah! All right, let me call him out quick. And I, I realize I used my left hand to draw. I shouldn't have uh, done that. Uh, two A zone, it's breaking the line. Two B zone, pretty good upper thoracic. A zone, B zone. So all those guys are pretty taken care of. Three yards. Turn on. And out of there. I got one left. I hope I made those count. Hold on. I got two holes on top of each other. I think I called these two earlier. So this one underneath it and that, that is like Rules lawyer barely, but it's breaking a black, maybe breaking line. 2A zone. I got uh, a B zone here, heart. That's good, kind of. Uh, maybe heart, just above the heart. And one up there, still pretty good. And two here, right next to the spine, nicking the spine. Hopefully that would expand. And uh, up there, and some blood work, blood stuff here behind the target. You can pretty even, guys, on the hits. Very even. I think these were the 245s. Let's try to film. 245s, 2357s, 245s, 2357s, 245s, 2357s. So really, really pretty close. Just one-handed point style shooting. All right, guys, let me do a retreat, Joe. I think this is something that really tells you about a pistol, that there might be up to two or three bad guys, uh, sometimes more, and you have to make transitions. You probably got to make up to five transitions in a seven-second gunfight. Two seconds to draw on first shot, hopefully more like 1.5, 1.6. Uh, gives you a way better advantage to counter ambush. Two seconds, and you got to be firing for at least seven seconds. Five transitions, three bad guys, right? So headshot, headshot, headshot at the end. I'm going to run dry, though, because I only got seven in my gun. A lot of people carrying five-shot revolvers. That's even worse. You'd have to draw a backup gun. In my opinion, if you carry a revolver, you need to carry a backup gun. But let's start with a revolver, and I'll kind of show you what it would look like. Also, let me talk about handgun stopping power a little bit. 357, you're probably going to need, with hot, three-inch barrel or longer, 125 grain hot Federal Remington Underwood hot 125. You're probably going to need at least one B zone hit and one C zone hit to kind of stop a bad guy from him from still even shooting you from the ground and that kind of thing. Uh, 45 with good hollow points like an HST or Golden Saber or a Ranger. I think you're going to need like two B zones. Okay, so, you know, we'll get into that in another video, perhaps. Three yards. Ah! And, oh shit! You're still a gunfight. Draw your backup gun. No shit. Carry one revolver, carry two. Like Jim Cirillo. I don't know if I missed that headshot at the end. Let me safely reholster live weapon, my real backup gun. And uh, let's see how I did. All right, do I think these guys will be stopped with a hot 125 from like a three inch barrel, two and a half, three inch barrel, 357 Magnum? Yeah, A zone on the spine, B zone in the heart, and at the very end, A zone headshot right in the T box. Really good. A zone on the spine, B zone on the spine. So, you know, kind of a lot of things require an A and a B or at least a B and a B. And 357, if it's really hot, maybe a B and a C. The reason I think 357 gets some C zone reaction is because the higher velocity causes more nerve sensation, in my theory, causing more psychological, a higher percentage of psychological stops. A zone, uh, heart. 
Retreat drill now with the 1911 lightweight commander, 45 AARP, and I have videos talking about it and slapping power and a real scientific nine millimeters, 45. Learn about it. 62% more tissue crush ball to ball. Even two B zones with ball ammo probably drop most bad guys. C zone, not as not at all. But an A and a B or two Bs probably on most bad shit bags on a uh with a good hollow point like hst or golden saber or ranger or something like that with huge massive expansion two b zones with a 45 probably of course i am aware of the florida cop shooting but two b zones probably get the reactions down on the ground or maybe they reanimate whatever i think that happens way more with nine millimeter smaller little holes going through but uh let's see how i do with the 45 and if i make the headshots on all guys because now i got nine rounds with extended magazine you'd have 10 plus 111 uh, but carrying a plus one appendix guys and just a leather holster this is very flat even with my big belly this is a very easy way to carry if i was going to trans Position, maybe when I get older, all the way over to this pistol or something like it. Okay, so here we go. Ah! I threw that shot on the left. My empty, I'm empty, I'm out of there. I still want to go to the back again. All right, let's see how I did. All right, with the 45, I got A zone perfectly on the heart and spine. Boom, he's seeing that shot. He drops like a ton of bricks. So I wouldn't need that headshot later, which I did call this as a bad shot. But I mean, it's still there in the chin. Uh, it's going to wreck some stuff. And over here, we got A zone perfectly, spine, heart. And 1B, this guy would also drop CNS shot. Maybe something about the pointability of 1911. This one's just off to the spine in the heart. A zone and B zone here nicking. If that was a hollow point, this guy's probably dropping too with that expansion. And the momentum of the heavier bullet is going to stay on path versus like later bullets, 9mm, et cetera, that can... Guys, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Always get in the comments. Fight the algorithm. Get in the comments. Get in the likes. Uh, hit the notification bell. All that stuff. I think you'd be equally armed well with both of them. The 357, it's been a year and a half since I shot it. The second one, I did really bad. Uh, in the uh, silver, tape, silver tape, here you got the 45 hits in the beige. And you see a lot of linear here on this guy with the 357. So this guy is pretty equal. This is what guys pretty equal in the hits and pretty much toast either way. Now the guy on the left, there's one the second run I did was really bad with a 357 hitting right and going high. I think that was a grip issue and recoil issue where you see the 45 all nice and tight. The 357 is kind of here. And there's a couple I did, I think, two more rounds that last time with the 45. Here, here, here versus here, here, here. Well, real world. That's going to be uh, drop bad guys, 45s versus 357. As long as you got good ammo in both, that's what matters. Please thumbs up, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think.